In this tutorial, you will learn how to take high density meshes like this and then use main body retopology techniques to make lower density meshes like this. You will learn how to use the uh, knife tool to make more advanced areas of topology around joint areas such as the knee. You will learn how to use the multi-resolution modifier to make low poly versions, medium poly versions, as well as high poly versions of your retopologized mesh. As I work my way through the tutorial, I try to not only explain what I'm doing, but why I'm doing what I'm doing. So thanks for taking a look at this tutorial, and I hope that you enjoy it. Hi, this is Ali Arango. Today I want to show you how to do easy, I think easy, main body retopology in Blender 3.6. So let's get started. Okay, what you see on the screen is the result of another tutorial. I'll put a link in the description so you can get to that tutorial showing how to make the main body. Okay, so what is topology and why would retopology and why would you want to do it, right? So basically what you see is a uh, high uh, high poly model. If you look here, this is the statistics in Blender. This has over a million triangles. If you wanted to animate something like this, it'd be very difficult to animate with a million triangles. So retopology is a way of, in a sense, redoing the body, right? Keeping the details and then drastically lowering down the polygon count so that now uh, your model or what you're working on is fairly easy to animate. There's other reasons for retopology as well. Uh, for instance, trying to set up UVs on a high poly mesh is very difficult. Where a retopologized mesh, it's uh, much easier to set up UVs. When I'm talking about UVs, you basically use them to set up where you want textures to go in your mesh. Okay, the way we're going to start this off is uh, we're going to go to front view. This thing that you see right here, this is from an add-on if you go to uh file add-ons uh or per what is it edit preferences add-ons the top thing in uh add-ons when i say add-ons i'm talking about something default that comes with blender that gives you a view i believe it's the top app option and uh it shows you this which is what i like to use you can uh manipulate your view using these tools as well Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hold shift, press A, we're gonna bring in a cube. With that cube brought in, uh, we're gonna put a subdivision surface on that cube. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to what looks like the wrench, you're gonna go to add modifiers, you're gonna add a subdivision surface on, you're gonna take this subdivision surface up to two. Uh, I'm gonna press S to make the size of the cube bigger. You're going to apply that subdivision surface modifier. Okay, we're going to go to a right view. You're going to go to your upper right of the screen. You're going to select this toggle x-ray, which allows you to select through here. You're going to go to your upper left, go to object from object mode into edit mode. You're going to make sure you're deselected. You're going to go make sure you're on face select. These faces right here are what we want. We want this on the sides you currently see as well as going through the model. So I'm going to press B, go close to the top of that line, left click and drag past the bottom of the line. And we got all of them. So when I, I rotate, you can see we have all of that. That's what we need. We're going to click off of this uh, that mode right there. So with this grab, now we're ready to extrude uh, our main part out. Okay, we're going to use extrusion, not extrude out, so to say. We're going to press the E key to extrude, right? So I'm going to right click. So that extrusion stayed in place. Doesn't look like anything happened, but there's faces on top of these faces. Those faces are there because we extruded. With those extruded faces selected, we're going to press S to scale, all right? Left click to lock that scale in. We're then going to push down to have this look like this. 
I'm now going to make sure I'm on face select, which I am going to click here, hold control. This uses the shortest path technique. So I click here. Blender finds the shortest path from here to here. Still holding control. I click here. I did that because I want that front to be flat. I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis, zero, and then left click to lock in. I hold shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan. I also held the middle mouse button to rotate. Okay, what I'm going to do is zoom back. I'm going to go to what's called local view. Currently, we're in global view. That's where you can see everything. Local mode will make it so we can just see what we're working on. So I'll click here to go into local view. What I'm going to do is make sure we're on face select. We are. I'm going to select here. Hold control. Control activates the shortest path technique. I'm not going to click here and here because Blender probably won't select the whole loop. So I'm um, still holding control. I'll click here, then here, then here. Now I have this whole face. The reason why I want this is I want to flatten this out. This thing I'm about to do, S to scale on the Y axis zero, is something I've memorized. It will flatten things out when they are typically on the Y axis. So here we go, S to scale on the Y axis zero, and then we'll left click to lock that in. Left click to deselect, go to view global slash local to come back into global view. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back. Uh, what we wanna do now is we wanna select everything but here. The easiest way I can think of it is to uh, hold Alt. We select all of this, and notice when I held Alt, we select that top part too. Before, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do that now. I'm going to go back into Local View. I'm going to press C for Paint Select, which allows me to easily paint. So I'm press C. If I have to rotate, I right-click, right, come out of Paint Select, hold the middle mouse button to rotate, get a view of what I want to do, which is Paint here. I press C for Paint Select. I have all of this, right? The reason why I have all of this is I want to delete this. So by selecting everything but that, I'm gonna go back to view, uh, global view. What I can do is press Control I, and then now I select just this. And with that selected, I'll press X to bring it to the delete menu, then choose faces to delete. Okay, with that done, I'll go to object mode. I'm gonna push this down uh, like this. When I'm pushing this down, this we basically want this to be around the shoulder area of our uh, character mesh, right? Uh, there is something we're going to have to do. We're going to click here, go here, right? The head is separated from this. We're going to go to sculpt mode here. This was a previous mask. That's what you see on there. We're going to hold Alt, press M. I'm going to press F to shrink the size of my brush. Basically, what we need to do here is raise the arms up, right? This window here is useful for seeing, you know, things that aren't hidden. That's why, pretty much why this window's here. What we want to do now is you're going to hold control shift, go around the shoulder joint, right? And then around the rest of the arm. The reason why we did this is we want to use the pose brush tool, right? The pose brush tool allows you to take high, uh, high poly meshes like this and pose them not really good for animation, which is why we're doing the retopology in the first place. Uh, the reason why we selected this mask is we want to turn this into a face set. A face set is a thing, kind of like a mask, uh, gives you options to work with. We're using this, we're about to use this particularly right now to work with the face set. So we're going to go to face set. We choose face set from mask. That's why we did the mask. The mask is still on there to get it off. I hold alt, press the M key, and now you can see that's not so dark of a shade. We, I'm going to go to front view. Now we'll go to this uh, pose tool. We need to go to our tool options. I'll select here just so we can see this better, right? We want to go down to advanced, and you want to put on face sets and then face sets boundary. The reason why you're doing this is so that we can have this pose tool work correctly. So you want to, if you go here to the shoulder area, the pose tool is showing you like what it's going to pose, right? It, it won't be correct. You need to go towards the hand with it on the hand. We can raise the arms up like that, which is what I want. Uh, and then what we can do now is to get rid of that. Let's go off of the face sets tool to get rid of face sets. We can go to face sets, face set from visible. Now that's gone. Uh, now what we want to do is go here. Be careful that you don't basically destroy your mesh. We'll go to flatten flatten is kind of like a super strong version of uh, that's how I think of it be aware that this X is on so we have this on both sides I 
I'm going to press R and press Control R. Blender's thinking. Oh, didn't do anything. Okay. R. Control R. And that remesh made it so that we can uh, basically smooth this out here. I'm holding shift, by the way. In Blender, when you hold shift, you automatically go to the smooth tool. So I'm doing this because when we move the arms up, you know, some of the, the mess was changed. I'm going to go back to view global slash local. Okay, what we're going to do now is hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm going to go to object mode. Click here. See the center line here? You're going to want this to come back to that's about the center of the shoulder there, right? We're going to go to edit mode. While we're here, I'm going to I'm holding my middle mouse to move this over. I want to set this to random so we can see the difference between the uh, retopology as well as the mesh. Okay, with this, we're going to go to view global slash local. And uh, what we're going to want to do here is hold control, press R. We're going to put a loop cut here. We're also going to look to the center here, right? So we want to put a loop cut here. And then these facers are what we want to draw out, right? For both sides, we're going to work on this side because we'll use symmetri uh, symmetry to get this work to the other side. So if we go to scope mode, go to these X's, X, Y, Z, we'll select X, we'll click here, plus X to minus X, we'll select symmetricize. When we go back to edit mode, yeah, now this is on the other side. So uh, for here, we'll go to face select, select here, hold shift, go back to view global slash local. Something that would help us work is if we go to these two circles, click the arrow next there, go down to shading, put a check mark next to read topology. And make sure you don't have the uh, X turned on here in edit mode. What we're going to do now is we're going to press E to extrude, bring this to about the wrist level there. We're going to go to view global slash local. You want to select two faces on either side of this center line. Make sure you're on face select. So holding shift, selecting here, we'll go back to view global slash local. Whoa, wait a second. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, we'll press E to uh Extrude, extrude down. We'll go back to view, view global slash local, control R. And then now what we're going to do is select here. These Here is means these four faces here. We'll go back to view global slash local. And now we're going to do is press E to extrude. Bring this down like this. You want to have this line up. Think your bottom of your ankle. You're going to press S to scale on the Z axis zero to flatten this out. I'm going to have this go slightly past the foot. You're going to hold control, press R, then put a loop cut, left click twice, bring this down. You can straighten that out some. You're going to go to face select. If you have a hard time grabbing it, go to view global slash local. Push that forward. Okay, you want to uh, loop cut going through here, control R. There's the loop cut, hold the minimize button, rotate. What you can do if basically right here I have a, it's not grabbing around the foot to the side. So what you can do is a hold, whoops, hold control is it, then right click, there you go. Hold control, then right select lets you draw a lasso select. You can also click here, that lets you select everything like it lets you basically select through the mesh, if that makes sense to you. What 
or you can just select. <laughs> oh, let's see, I don't feel, okay, so with that done, I'll, I'll press S to, yeah, S is X, S is going to X axis, there we go. Okay, uh, we'll go to scope mode, select the X. This X is in scope mode. The other X I had you turn off was in edit mode, okay? Uh, I'm gonna turn off this, uh, what is that, X-ray. You're gonna go from the X, Y, Z, click the arrows, go down to symmetric size. This plus X is this side. This is minus X. So when we go down uh, to symmetric size, we're copying what's on the right side to the left side. So there we go. We'll go back to edit mode. Okay, what you're going to want to do now is put three loop cuts here. So hold control, press R. So that's one, two, oops, three, right? Three loop cuts here. Hold control, one, two, three. Three loop cuts here, hold control, two, three, there we go. One loop cut going through here, hold control, left click. I look left clicked on nothing to try to deselect. Okay, what you're gonna do now is go to view global slash local, go to edge select, hold alt, click right on the edge, whoops, edge around the neck. That selects the whole uh, edge. I held shift in the middle mouse button to pan. You're going to move this up some like that. Go back to view global slash local. Okay, now what you're going to do is go to the wrench. Go to add modifier. You're going to select shrink wrap modifier. You're going to select the target as your main mesh. You can click this to basically see that applied. For the neck area that's still selected, you'll go to the smooth tool. I'll zoom out, hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan, and you can move this to smooth that, and while smoothing it, it'll help to move that uh, placement on the neck. Uh, let's see, if we don't have this here. So what we'll do here is we'll go to scope mode, click here, we'll select symmetric size, go back to edit mode. Okay, what we're going to do now is click here. We're going to make sure this is actually on tweak. You can see it's on tweak because it'll have uh, the symbols you see there. Uh, we are also going to go to phase select. We are going to use that mirror. So I held alt, I clicked here, right? See how I have like that whole loop selected there? I'm going to press X and then choose phases to delete. I'm going to hover here. I'll go back to view global slash local. This whole side selected. I'll press X, then choose faces to delete. For this, what we want to do is we're going to want to go to object mode. We're going to apply this. We apply that because we want this shape to be locked in. Now we're going to add a mirror modifier. So we have the... Uh, you know, the mirror on there. And what we're going to do now is go back to edit mode. You can only see half because you want to click this here, which makes it look like the mirror is applied. Okay, what we're going to do now, we'll look towards the back. We have an issue here. We'll select the monitor. We'll turn on this clipping on the mirror. We'll go to edge select. We'll hold alt select here. We'll press S to scale on the X axis zero. We'll turn back on this monitor. And then with that turned on, we'll push the geometry towards itself. And that should fix the issue that we had in the back there. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to Square down to viewport display. We'll select in front so we don't have to keep going into uh, view, glo uh, uh, view global slash local. See the space here, space here, uh, space here, space here. When I say space, I'm, I'm I want you to think like we could fit a loop cut in here. We have very low geometry. We can put loop cuts here, here, here. So that's what we're going to do. So for here, we'll put in two loop cuts. Roll the mouse once. We'll put a loop cut here, a loop cut here, loop cut here, a loop cut here, loop cut here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the where I can fit in 
a loop tube, uh, a, loop, <laughs> a loop cut. If you have any areas where you kind of have like this, basically you can fix this by going to this magnet, clicking that, going to the arrow right next to here, make sure you have this set to face project, turn all these things on right here, right? This is out, so what we'll do is hold shift. Can I get in here? We'll hold shift, kind of aim where we want this to go, press G, and then now that snapping, turn that back off. Anything that is like, see how this side here too? Uh, you can snap. You can get the geometry to come out using that snapping tool. Okay, when we look at our geometry, we can make it cleaner by using a smooth modifier. So we'll click here, we'll go to smooth. We'll take this factor up to one. Turn these on. And then we'll go to object mode. We'll click apply, All right? We have that, uh, this happen. So we'll hold alt, select here, push the geometry towards itself, left click to click off, All right? See the legs here? We'll try to fix that with another shrink wrap. We'll go to shrink wrap. We'll select project negative. The target will select the hand. There we go. Uh, so now with that shrink wrap on, we'll go up here and then for this, uh, we'll apply that. See a split there. Yet again, hold all. Uh, sometimes you gotta push slightly, right? Click off, it's a little interesting. Then you have to go back and click again, right? And then pull the other direction. Kind of interesting. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in, rotate. Click, rotate here. For here, we can hold Alt, select here. There we go. As far as adjusting uh, things on here, you can, with this tweak, you can select to drag. You can change this to Vertex select as well. Drag the points to where you want them to be. Okay, I, I think that this uh, topology way is pretty easy to remember, pretty quick. I did want to show you something else. You can do, suppose you want better topology for bending the knee. You can do this fairly easily. I'm, I'm moving using the tweak tool, right? What you can do is press the K tool. We're going to draw a diamond, right? So I press K. I've hovered over this line. You can see that line is highlighted. I'm going to left click, let go of my mouse, right? The blender is automatically highlighting. I left click again, left click again. I left click again, and then left click again. Now that I'm finished making this diamond shape, I'm going to press enter to lock the knife tool in. The knife tool goes away, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press K, hover here. Not Didn't click anything. I press K. I'm going to left click, click here, press enter to connect to there. I'm gonna press K again, click here, move to here, left click, press enter, press K, didn't click anything yet, and now I clicked, move this to here, left click, press enter. I'm gonna uh, hover here, press K, uh, left click, move this here, left click, press enter again. Okay, what I'm gonna do is go to edge select now, select here, hold shift as well as alt, Select the uh, shape here. I'm going to right click, go to loop tools, and then select circle. I'll left click to deselect. Okay, so now we have a better shape as far as like for animating as far as the knee. Uh, you could do this for the back of the leg. You could adjust this to make it better fit the knee. I wanted to show you the basic technique. You could put this on the back of the elbow as well. Roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. Okay, when I zoom into the leg, see here, if you look, you can see that's not on the leg, right? So if you make changes like we just did, right, what you want to do is go to, or one of the options, go to add modifier, 
shrink wrap, put the shrink wrap modifier back on, and then you'll see that things will get better, right? This should fix this. So this is, oh, here we go. There we go. All right. So you can do the, the shrink wrap modifier again, and then you can apply this again. I'm gonna right click here and select Shade Smooth. Okay, now you might sit there and look at this, and if you're if you don't understand how retopology works, you might say, "Yeah, that's interesting. You know, it's low poly, but like there's pretty much no detail here, which you can see there, right?" So, uh, typically, when you're doing things for animation, you would take the topology, you would make a normal map from the uh, high topology uh, character, and then you would basically take the the shadows. Uh, it's a kind of a way of looking at it, but basically the when you put the use a, the high poly mesh to take that detail to put it to low poly mesh, the low poly mesh basically has the detail of the high poly mesh. Besides using normal maps, another thing that you can do is, for instance, you could do this, right? So what we're going to do is uh, we'll apply, whoops, we'll apply this mirror modifier, right? So when we go in here, this is a, a, a thousand triangles, right? So this is extremely low, right? So basically what you can do is you can add a multi-resolution modifier, right? You have a multi-resolution modifier is like a more advanced uh, subdivision surface modifier, kind of. I can click subdivide, right? Subdivide again, I'll subdivide this all the way up to three. So take the geometry count up fairly high. Once I do that, now I can add a shrink wrap modifier. Okay, so now with this shrink wrap, I'll take the uh, the target aim here, and you can see we have the detail of our high poly in the the retopology mesh, right? So what's really interesting is I can click this and then apply this, right? Now normally. Uh, to have that detail, you would think, you know, you have to have this mesh behind it. I don't actually, to be honest, fully understand how it works, but that detail is now baked in here. Even if I take away this mesh, the detail is still in this mesh from the, the high poly, as long as you have this re multi-resolution modifier on. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back. So as far as the benefit of this, what I'll do is I'm going to Hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan. I'll click here, hold shift, press D, right click. And then I'll drag out this copy, right? I'll hold shift, press D, right click, drag out this copy. Hold shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan. Hold shift, press D, I left click, left click or right click. So now we have those copies. I'll shrink this, actually I'm gonna hold control, press space. So we can see all of these. Okay, so what's useful is if I click here and I, uh, actually we need that other, I'm gonna hold control, press space, we need this. So if I click here, go here and select wireframe, right? I'll click here, select wireframe, I'll click here, select wireframe, right? So if I click here, I can take this down to nothing, right? So there's a basic level. I can take this down to the first uh, level, right? And then here, what I can do is I can, oh, here you go, apply that, right? So then here I can take this, I'll take this to two, same thing, I'll apply that. So now you can see that if you need something very low poly, you could have this, you could have this, or you could have this, and these are all still in the retopology here because we still have this on. So we can change this and basically have multiple versions of uh, the body that we need as far as like what kind of geometry count we would uh, like to work with. Okay guys, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. Uh, that's it for the tutorial. For those of you who like the videos on this channel and share them, thank you very much, I really appreciate that. 
For those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel, you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.